In the aftermath of the Second World War, the global stage witnessed the rise of new players, the United States and Soviet Union, leading their respective alliances, NATO and the Warsaw Pact, and their bid to shape Europe's destiny. While the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact eventually collapsed, the modern-day Russian Federation continues to harbor grievances with NATO, and this episode explores the ongoing conflict between Russia and the alliance. The roots of Russia's conflict with NATO can be traced back to the aftermath of World War II. However, before delving into this, we'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Call of War. In this free online PvP strategy game, you can rewrite history by choosing a real country and guiding it to victory in World War II. Forge alliances, engage in massive 100-player matches on PC and mobile devices, and deploy a diverse range of units and weapons to ensure triumph. Click the link in the description within the next 30 days to receive 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's episode. In 1990, the stage was set for the conflict between the Russian Federation and NATO. Discussions took place between the U.S., West Germany, and the Soviet Union regarding the potential reunification of Germany. While reunification was inevitable, the Soviets considered East Germany vital to their Warsaw Pact. Talks between U.S. Secretary of State James Baker and Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev proved crucial in this context. Baker assured Gorbachev that German reunification would not lead to NATO expansion into Eastern Europe, and Gorbachev, in turn, asserted that the Soviet Union would not accept such expansion. This agreement laid the groundwork for Germany's peaceful reunification and the withdrawal of occupying troops from both NATO and the Warsaw Pact. However, as history unfolded, different interpretations emerged. Gorbachev claimed that the topic of NATO expansion was not discussed in those discussions, while Baker maintained that NATO expansion was never ruled out. Despite this, many officials from the former USSR and the current Russian Federation perceived the talks as a promise that NATO would not accept Eastern European members. The collapse of the USSR in 1991 altered the dynamics significantly. The newly formed Russian Federation faced internal struggles while former nations of the Warsaw Pact considered joining NATO. In response, Russia formed the Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTO, in 1992, a collective defense compact akin to NATO. However, the possibility of former Soviet states joining NATO remained open. NATO leaders were willing to admit new members if they contributed to collective security. Yet, Russia's internal issues, including a constitutional crisis and unrest in Chechnya, made it ineligible for NATO membership, leading to mutual distrust between Russia and the alliance. The conflict between Russia and NATO continues to evolve, with both sides grappling with historical perceptions and geopolitical considerations. As the world navigates this complex dynamic, the impact of past decisions and interpretations remains a significant factor in shaping current international relations. The United States pursued a two-track policy, expanding NATO into Eastern Europe while simultaneously engaging in separate high-level talks with Russia. As part of these talks, Russia participated in the Partnership for Peace Initiative, a NATO program that allowed the country to observe NATO militaries and learn democratic best practices for military control. Russian forces later served alongside NATO peacekeepers in Bosnia and Serbia. However, it is essential to note that Russia's actions in Serbia did not stem from a genuine alliance with NATO. Russia had maintained a close relationship with Serbia and viewed NATO intervention in the Balkan Wars as a challenge to international order. Despite Gorbachev's recollections and the beliefs of some Russian officials, NATO continued its expansion into the post-Soviet world. Certain former Warsaw Pact countries, particularly Poland, lobbied aggressively for NATO membership shortly after breaking away from Russia. In 1999, Poland, along with the Czech Republic and Hungary, was welcomed into NATO. Subsequently, in 2004, an even larger expansion included Slovakia, Slovenia, Bulgaria, Romania, 
and, most importantly, the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. The admission of the Baltic states infuriated Russia as these regions had been Russian protectorates and later annexed by the Soviet Union. The Baltic states, however, expressed their strong desire to distance themselves from Russian influence as quickly as possible. Joining NATO placed competing military interests right at Russia's doorstep, leading Russia to threaten economic retaliation against its former vassals. Statements implying that Russia's military equipment might fall into NATO's hands undermined international security agreements. As the former Warsaw Pact nations established themselves as independent states, leaders sympathetic to Russia found themselves ousted by revolutionary movements such as the 2003 Rose Revolution in Georgia and Ukraine's 2004 Orange Revolution. This emergence of nationalism further strained relations between NATO and Russia. The 2008 Kosovo Declaration of Independence, recognized by the U.S., U.K., France, and most NATO countries, but not by Russia, added to the tensions. Russia argued that Kosovo's independence violated Serbia's territorial integrity and could lead to a dangerous domino effect. This domino effect became evident during the Russian-Georgian War from 2003 to 2008. The U.S. invested significant resources in Georgia, supporting its military and endorsing future NATO membership for Georgia and Ukraine. Georgia faced conflicts with Russian-backed separatists in South Ossetia, leading to a full-scale Russian invasion. The situation escalated when South Ossetia and Abkhazia, regions within Georgia, declared independence, recognized by Russia but only by a few other countries. Russia cited Kosovo's independence as a precedent for South Ossetia's independence. However, Georgia's actions and the subsequent conflict further strained relations between NATO and Russia. The same period saw Ukraine experience internal chaos following President Viktor Yanukovych's decision to pursue closer ties with Russia instead of a long-awaited partnership with the European Union in 2013. This led to widespread protests and counter-protests by pro-Russian parties, sparking further tensions in the region. The Russian perspective saw the pro-EU sentiments in Ukraine as the worst possible scenario. It signaled a potential anti-Russian regime change and a surge of support for the European Union and NATO from a nation traditionally in their sphere of influence. Crimea particularly the strategic location of Sevastopol, became a major concern for Russia. In response to protests against Ukraine's pivot towards the EU, pro-Russian militias and Russian ground forces occupied Crimea in early 2014. A controversial referendum in March resulted in Crimea being annexed by Russia, despite international criticism of its fairness. NATO's cooperation with Russia as an outsider came to an end after the annexation. President Putin suggested that other areas of eastern Ukraine with ethnic Russian majorities could join Russia. This further escalated tensions, and pro-Russian forces launched coups in Donetsk and Luhansk, leading to the ongoing Donbass war. Tensions between Russia and NATO continued throughout the 2010s, with incidents such as Turkey downing a Russian fighter jet and Montenegro's admission to NATO, which Russia vehemently opposed. As the 2020s began, NATO and Russian forces continued posturing and building up troops, reminiscent of the tense days of the Cold War. Russia demanded that Ukraine never join NATO and invaded the country in 2022. The war in Ukraine continues, with NATO's presence in the region heightened. Finland and Sweden applied for NATO membership, while Ukraine remains a focus of international sympathy but is not yet a NATO member. The Cold War had polarized Europe between the United States and Russia, leaving the Russian Federation concerned about the admission of former Soviet republics into NATO. Russia feared being surrounded by potentially hostile neighbors. The long-standing conflict between Russia and Europe remains uncertain, with the future outcome yet to be determined. 